Today we are making Ultimate Loaded Taquitos. Welcome back to Cooking with Kayla D. I'm Kayla and this is my husband Randy. My disclaimer. If you haven't done so, please like, subscribe, and remember to hit that notification bell so you can get all our newest episodes as they release. For your filling ingredients, you're going to need one pound of ground beef or ground meat of your choice, or some shredded chicken. Also, 12 to 24 corn tortillas or flour, whichever you so choose. One half cup of queso or a Velveeta pouch. One teaspoon of onion powder, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, one half teaspoon of pepper, one teaspoon of salt, one quarter a cup of cream cheese at room temperature or whipped cream cheese, one tablespoon of carne asada seasoning or taco seasoning, one third cup of enchilada sauce, and you'll also want some cooking oil of your choice to fry these taquitos. Once you have all your ingredients prepped, you'll go ahead and put the meat of your choice right into your skillet over medium to high heat. We are using some grass-fed organic ground beef. Get your ground beef crumbled up and into your pan or if you have one of those little musher things that you can mush it up with and break it apart, that's fine. If you're using the shredded rotisserie chicken that's already cooked, you'll go ahead and shred your chicken at this time and put it in a bowl. You will not have to heat that. Go ahead and cook your meat as it starts to bubble and turn gray around the edges. Start adding in your seasonings. First, your onion powder. And after you add in your onion powder, you will add in your garlic powder. And after your garlic, you will put your salt and your pepper. Once you have these ingredients in, you'll want to go ahead and stir your meat up. This will be the first time you are stirring it. I did go ahead and add a quarter cup of water into my meat to cook it because it does help break the meat down into smaller pieces. I don't want big chunks in my taquitos, so you can also do that as well if you like to. But go ahead and just turn that around. You can see how it's almost like a mush consistency but it's not so it's just easier to wrap it up into the tortilla and there won't be big chunks so it's not breaking that tortilla it should take about seven to ten minutes to cook your meat all the way through once you have it cooked through you're going to go ahead and drain that excess water and oil and once you have your meat drained put it back on and let it get a little bit of texture to it by frying it for a couple of seconds there once you have that getting some texture and crust on it we'll add the rest of our ingredients now i'm going to use the whipped cream cheese because i really don't like to deal with the room temperature thing and the whip just melts right in so i'm putting in my whipped cream cheese right now and then now i'm going to add in my queso I went ahead and put mine into little cups here, as you can see, just to make the pouring easier. You can use those Velveeta pouches that you can get at the Dollar Tree or at Walmart. It comes in a box of a pack of three or six. It works just fine. I prefer the queso because it's got a little bit of kick to it. You can get mild, medium, hot, and it's just, it adds a very rich, creamy texture to your taquitos. It makes it very creamy so when you're biting into them, you get a lot of creamy flavor. Also, I am using carne asada seasoning. If you do not have that, you can use taco seasoning. Just a tablespoon of that would be fine. After you have your ingredients in there, go ahead and stir it up. If you are doing the shredded rotisserie chicken option, you would go ahead and add all of your seasonings, just like you saw us do with the meat from the very beginning with the onion powder, the garlic, salt, pepper, but you would add it straight to your already cooked and shredded chicken and you would mix it up thoroughly. Now you might want to stick it into the microwave or into a saucepan to mix it up if you want to heat your cheeses through, but it is not necessary. You can go ahead and mix it up, especially if you're using the whipped cream cheese. Now if you have a room temperature cream cheese, you might want to go ahead and heat that and your queso or Velveeta up together 
in a bowl before mixing it into your chicken or mix it in and then heat it up for 30 seconds. Just do whatever you think is easiest and has the best result for you. And here you go, here is my filling. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in the enchilada sauce. I like to make sure I have all the ingredients blended in really well before I add the next. I just went for a mild can of El Paso, the your enchilada sauce, and I poured some of that in, and then I mixed it in very well, still while cooking it over the heat. If you're doing the shredded chicken, you would just add it in with your shredded chicken. Not a big deal. It works out very, very well. And also, if you didn't want to use an already cooked rotisserie chicken, you could also just put some chicken into a pressure cooker or your Instapot. It only takes a few minutes to cook that through. And then you let it cool off, shred your chicken out, and then boom, you have it. You could also do this in a crock pot. It is very easy to do it in a crock pot, even with the ground beef. You put all of your ingredients into it and mix it well while the meat is raw, and you put it on low for four to six hours or high for two to four hours, and it will cook itself through. We have done it and it was delicious. Now for your dip ingredients, you're going to need one cup of sour cream and a tablespoon of taco seasoning. That's it. For every cup of sour cream you use, use a tablespoon of taco seasoning. So you'll want to get your bowl ready. And you can add sriracha or something to this if you want some spice also to your filling as well. If you like heat, by all means, add it. If you like smoke, add some smokiness to it or some smoked paprika. Whatever your family likes, you can change recipes to be delicious for your family's palate. So go ahead and get your sour cream in there. Once you have your sour cream, go ahead and add your taco seasoning. Like with us, we do like the lower sodium taco seasoning, or I will actually make it myself sometimes and use my Himalayan pink salt because it's healthier for my insulin levels. It doesn't spike them. So as you can see here, look at that. You mix it up really well. Also, this dip is very good for a taco salad. So if you're making a taco salad, this dip works very well for that. I always add like a tablespoon or two of milk to it just to thin it out a little bit to make it more like a dressing. Oh Lord have mercy, it is so delicious. I learned how to do that in home ec when I was in high school. It is one of my favorite taco dressings for taco salad. It's just sour cream and the taco seasoning and a tablespoon or two of milk until you get the desired consistency of the dressing you want for your taco salad. I'm telling you, it's out of this world. You have to try it if you have not already. And if you have, you know what I'm talking about. Now that I have my dip done, I wanted to add a little bit of zing to it. So I put about half of a teaspoon of lime juice into mine. You do not have to. This is a completely optional ingredient. I just wanted that little zippy zing because I love that lime flavor in my Mexican food. So we are choosing to use the corn tortillas today. I went ahead and put a stack of corn tortillas on a paper plate on top of a napkin, covered it with a damp towel and microwaved them for 30 to 45 seconds just to get them warm so that they are pliable and do not break. So I went ahead and I took my tortilla and I took about a tablespoon of stuffing of my mixture and put in there and then I just used some of the mixture for my sealant some of mine did come open so I would say to mix some flour and water together for yours or to use a toothpick but I just did it like that just to make it easier on myself a couple kind of came open but for the most part majority of them actually stayed sealed up so it was really nice so you will continue to go ahead and fill your taquitos until you have all of your taquitos filled. You just want to spread it across as you can see here and gently just roll them over. You do not have to tuck your ends up. If you are using flour tortillas, I would just recommend to use the smaller flour tortillas or a, like a medium size. Also, if you're using shredded chicken, you can put more filling into a flour tortilla and roll it up and fry it. And actually what that is called is a flata. So if you've ever gone on to a Mexican restaurant, in America at least, and you see flatas on the menu, basically that's just like a meat with some cheeses rolled up 
in a flour tortilla and then they lightly fry it. They usually will serve it with like sour cream, guacamole, and a little small thing of like salad with the, the lettuce with the tomatoes on top or something or some pico. It is really, really good. I went through a flot the kick years ago and I highly enjoyed them. Once you have your taquitos all rolled up, you'll want to get your oil over medium to high heat. Make sure it is up to temperature, checking it, and go ahead and gently add in your taquitos. Like I said, a couple may open up, but it's not a big deal. Just go ahead and go with the flow. They will probably stay closed. I'm sure you're probably a way better cook than I am. I am still learning how to do all this stuff, so bear with me. I'm not perfect by all means, but I tried the best I can, and we actually really enjoyed them. They were so good. I'd have to say it was probably one of my best taquitos because the shell was so crunchy, but it wasn't hard. It was like that nice crunchy melt in your mouth, and then it had all that creamy feeling in the middle. It was just amazing. I had never had a taquito like that before in my life. And mind you, like this, you can make a bunch of these up and you could fry them and then store them in the refrigerator. And the next day you could just place a bunch of them in a baking dish, add some enchilada sauce to the top and some cheese and throw them in the oven. And you've got like an ultimate loaded enchilada. How's that? Easy for enchilada. You can make up a bunch cook twice as many and then you have two nights of dinner and you didn't have to hardly do any work you just put the sauce and the cheese and bake it and boom you've got another one and if you want to get easy you could buy the beans that are in the bag and push it out into your bowl or heat it in the microwave they have rice that's already ready i mean there's really easy meals you can still cook your family if you don't have a lot of time and that's the one thing I like about recipes. There is easy recipes and then there's recipes where it's going to take a little bit more time to cook. And when you have time to cook, try those recipes that are a little bit more in depth. They're worth it. As you can see here, you cook your taquito for about two minutes total, maybe two and a half. And then you'll go ahead and remove them and put them onto a plate with some paper towels or with like a wire rack over a cookie sheet. That way it can drain the excess oil off. And you will have the most crispy, delicious taquitos you have ever had. They were really, really good. One of these times, we're going to have to try to make some shredded beef ones. Because that's what I grew up eating. Where I'm from, they always had shredded beef taquitos when you would go out. Nowadays, they have like chicken and all kinds of stuff everywhere. But when I was little, they did not. These were really good, though. And there you have it. You have an ultimate loaded taquito. So I hope you enjoy this recipe. We paired ours with some chips and salsa and actually made some guacamole to go with it too. I had some pico and we just cut up avocado and put it in with it and it turned out really good. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Romans 8 verse 18. And as always, here are some photos from Miss Debbie, our neighbor, and her companion, Miss Lucy. They took some beautiful photos of the sunrise here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. We hope you enjoy these photos. Miss Lucy is so adorable. Thank you for being here on Cooking with Kayla D. As always, we say God bless you. Stay in that kitchen and keep on cooking. If you would like to subscribe to our channel, you can click the icon here on the left. And for more delicious recipes, the icon here on the right. We would love to have you as a part of our cooking community. And if you have any ideas or recipes that you would want to be done, please leave a comment in the comment section and we will get right to it. And let me know if you try this recipe and if you do and you put it on social media, tag me in it. I am on Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and all my links to all my social media or in my profile in the about me section.